And here is our one of our final tutorials on functions and dealing with the difference quotient. The difference quotient um, is something that you see a lot in calculus as a higher level math procedure um, that sometimes students don't really understand because it combines a lot of advanced um, function techniques to figure it out. Um, but it is very important because it has um, a lot of the concepts that need to be used when you go to higher level mathematics like calculus. So this is the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x over h. There are other forms that the difference quotient can come in, but this is one of them, where it's using function notation and kind of breaking this down, saying that f of x plus h, okay, minus f of x all over this value h, and obviously h can equal zero. Now, what students and others have to understand is that when we want to simplify or find the difference quotient, which it asks us to do, is that we have to understand what it is asking. We are actually using two of the same function, but inputting two different variables. Okay, this is saying use function f, and this is what I try to explain, or what I am explaining, is that function f, we're inputting, if you remember, inside the parentheses of the input, we're inputting x plus h into that function f, whatever that may be. The next one, we're subtracting f of x, so function f. With x inside. And then we're dividing by h. What is h? h is a variable. Um, you'll learn about that more in calculus, um, what h would represent, um, but it is h. So given this one, we have f of x equals 10. So that means we first need to find out these values. We need to take f of x plus h, and we need to find out what f of x is, and then we have h. So let's find this out. If we take step by step, take each individual one, we find f of x plus h. So that means if I input f of x plus h into function f, so into here, into this equation, well, if you notice, there is no x, there is no placeholder. So if I input this in, this is actually a horizontal line, which just gives me 10. Anything I plug into this function gives me 10. I plug 1, 2, a billion, I get 10. I plug in x plus h, I get 10. This is what we refer to as a constant function. Okay. If I have f of x, well, f of x is 10 as well. So when we write this, we have f of x plus h, which is 10, minus, minus right here, minus f of x, which is 10, all over h, which h can equal 0. So we have 10 minus 10, which is 0, all over h, so our answer is simply 0. And I call this a donut, we'll put our sprinkles there, and we have our 0. Okay, so that's using the difference quotient. Let's try another one. This is another simpler one. We have f of x equals x, 6x minus 2. So we once again, we have f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So let's simplify. Let's uh, do the difference quotient. Once again, we have our two expressions. We have f of x plus h. Well, f of x plus h means that I'm taking x plus h and substituting it into here which goes into my equation wherever there's a placeholder, wherever there's x. Well, I have one of them. So I'm going to have 6 times x plus h minus 2. I have f of x, which is 6x minus 2. And so we go through and solve this, or simplify it. We have 6 times x plus h minus 2 minus f of x, which is 6x minus 2 all over h. We have 6x plus 6h minus 2, so now I'm simplifying. Remember, distribute this through, because this is the opposite of f of x. The opposite of f of x is subtracting f of x, so it's the opposite of that expression. So we're going to need to distribute that through, so we get negative 6x plus 2 all over h. And this and this will cancel, this and this will cancel, and left with 6h over h, and 6, 6, 6, pops it in. Is our simplified answer. Let's try this difference quotient. Okay, we want to write out the difference quotient and simplify. So same procedure. All right, find difference quotient. Call it DQ, which is just not ice cream, but also equations. <laughs> That's a math joke for those that are paying attention. Find DQ and simplify. Right. Well, it's a little different. Now we have f of 2 plus h 
And then we have f of 2. All right, well, f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, we're given this f of x, so this function f. Now, notice all three of these different examples are have different functions. I should be using different letters just so we can keep them straight, but usually books don't have that, and I'm not doing it either. Bad habit. But we want to find f of 2 plus h. Well, that means that this is my input. I'm plugging the function f, which they gave me. Remember, this is my function name. So I'm plugging into here, plugging the placeholder. Well, so it should be 2 plus h squared. And then we have f of 2. f of 2, I plug 2 into here. Into my placeholder, it should be 2 squared. So I simplify, I have 4. And I'll just keep that the way it is. And let's just find out what we get. Or actually, I will simplify this. Um, we foil this through. This is actually the same thing as 2 plus h plus 2 plus h. 4 plus uh, 4h. It's a great group to get involved. And another math joke, if you didn't catch that. But what we have here is f of 2 plus h. We have now simplified to being, so let's write this out, 4 plus 4h plus h squared. That is f of, that's that in the first place, f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. f of 2, we found out being is 4. Okay? Because that is the simplified expression. It's not asking me to multiply. It's asking me to find those values. These are outputs. These are outputs. This f of something. Output. f of something. All right? All over h. That's a filler. We simplify this. Notice we have opposite of 4, and here's a positive 4. So we have 4h plus h squared over h. We can factor out an h. That's it. The h's will cancel out. I'm left with 4 plus h. And obviously, h can equal 0, and that's our answer. That's our simplified answer. 4 plus h. Okay. All right. Try one more. Sure, why not? Give you the whole gamut of toughies, huh? All right. So once again, we have 1 over a x is our function. Find the difference quotient and simplify. We have f of x plus h, which is an output I need to find. Okay? This is an output. This is an output. This is an output. And we'll keep on repeating that for all those that aren't sure how this works. This is an output. The whole expression is an output. It's f of x plus h. This is f of x plus h. So that is our input. So I'm inputting in the function f. So I have 1 over x plus h. Then I have f of x. f of x. That is my input. So I have 1 over x. So when I write this out, I have 1 over x plus h minus f of x, or the opposite of that, which would be that right there, all over h. I want to simplify this, how you simplify fractions. Now this gets into some advanced algebra. But I'm going to multiply top and bottom by a common denominator. So I'm going to have x plus h times x. Just multiply these two values together. All right, I, whatever I do to the top, I have to do the bottom because I only can multiply by 1. All right, and this is 1, so this is legal. When I do that, remember I have to distribute this here and here. And then multiply that to that one. When we do that, we have x plus h, x over x plus h, and these two will cancel out. Minus quantity x plus h times x over x, and these will cancel out. And this is all over h times x plus h times x. We can simplify this. And we notice since these cancel out, not going to be any red, they cancel out, and this will cancel out. We have left over x minus the quantity x plus h all over h times x plus h times x. I'll just give you a hint on these. Do not simplify the bottom. Do not simplify because it will come out nicer in the end if you do not. All right, so when we have this, we distribute the negatives. So we have x minus x minus h. We have the 
h times x plus h, x, these two will cancel out, and now we're left with negative h over h, x plus h, x, if you notice again, cancel, and get our final answer, negative 1 over the quantity x plus h times x. And that's our final answer. Oh, pretty nice, huh? So, we went through several different examples of how to use this thing called the difference quotient. The key thing is when you use function notation, identify that when we have f of x or f of something, that something is the input, but the whole thing is the output. The inside right here, this green portion, and this green portion, is the input. That's the input. That's the input of the function. And the whole thing is the function. What's the function? Well, either you need an equation or a value, but luckily, they give us what f of x is, the equation along with the associated input, and the placeholder, and that's how what we need to do. Separate into simple parts, and we can get our answer. All right. Hopefully this helped you simplify and identify difference quotients, and good luck. And God bless.